What if everything we know about sun-like stars is wrong? What if the real cradles of life aren't shining yellow, but a deep, mesmerizing orange? That, my friends, is the promise of cooler stars. Beyond our sun, in the search for life's cradle, we often look to the stars, searching for signs of life beyond our planet. Our first instinct is to find planets similar to Earth. We hunt for worlds with liquid water, breathable atmospheres, and a familiar orbit around a sun-like star. But what if our sun isn't the ideal star for life after all? What if it is, in fact, hostile to life, and we just got lucky, or at least somewhat fortunate? Maybe the sun is not the benevolent beast we believe it to be. After all, it bathes us in radiation, such as ultraviolet light, which destroys the very fabric of our DNA and causes cancer and many other ailments. What if, in our quest to find life elsewhere, we've been looking for planets in the wrong stellar neighborhoods? Our sun is a yellow dwarf star. Its name is somewhat of an irony, given that it is larger than around 70% of all stars. This is a relic from a bygone age in which telescopes were too weak to find red dwarfs, which are tiny but numerous. They're usually around 10% the mass of our sun and far less luminous. They too have their issues for life, such as unstable radiation outputs and the fact that any planet in the habitable zone would likely be tidally locked, just like our moon is to Earth. But they do have the benefit of lasting for trillions of years. That means not a single red dwarf star in the universe has ever died, except maybe for those consumed by black holes. But that's a topic for another video. The Sun a cosmic furnace that has bathed Earth in light and warmth for billions of years. This celestial progenitor of life has been the cornerstone of life on our planet, providing the energy necessary for photosynthesis. It drives weather patterns and marks the passage of time with its daily rise and set. The sun's influence extends far beyond just light and warmth. It shapes the very fabric of our existence as humans. Yellow dwarfs are relatively common in the universe but they have a significant drawback. Their lifespans are short, cosmically speaking. These stars, while abundant, burn through their nuclear fuel at a faster rate compared to their longer-lived counterparts. This rapid consumption of hydrogen means that yellow dwarfs like our sun have a limited window during which they can support life on surrounding planets. In the vast river of cosmic time, their brilliance is but a fleeting moment. Our sun is already middle-aged, and in a few billion years it will begin to swell, becoming a red giant, swallowing our world and all that it casts its nurturing light upon. But far before that, it will naturally heat as its consumption of hydrogen increases. Before you worry, the sun has billions of years left, but for Earth, we have perhaps 800 million years or so left before it gets too hot for life. This transformation is a natural part of a star's life cycle. As the sun exhausts its hydrogen fuel, it will start to burn helium, causing its outer layers to expand dramatically. This phase will mark the end of the sun's stable period, known as the main sequence stage, and the start of a more tumultuous era, the beginning of the end. This expansion will engulf the inner planets, including Earth, making our current home a scorching wasteland. The once vibrant and life-sustaining environment will be reduced to a barren, inhospitable landscape. Oceans will evaporate, the atmosphere will be stripped away, and any remaining life will be incinerated. The Earth, which has nurtured countless species over billions of years, will become a silent eulogy to the impermanence of life. The sun's relatively short lifespan, 
and volatile nature make it a less than ideal candidate for fostering life over extremely long timescales. While it has provided a stable environment for billions of years, this stability is temporary. Other stars with longer lifespans and more stable outputs may offer better prospects for the development and sustainability of life. While life on Earth has thrived under its rays, this will be a relatively short chapter in our planet's story. As the sun ages and changes, so too must life on Earth adapt or face extinction, but it cannot possibly adapt to the end of all things. The future of life on our planet is inextricably linked to the fate of our star, and as we know, that is not a good fortune to be told. The search for life beyond our solar system is a quest that drives astronomers and astrobiologists alike. With advanced telescopes and space missions, we are beginning to uncover the secrets of distant stars and their planets. Each discovery brings us closer to understanding the conditions necessary for life and the potential for its existence beyond Earth. Life on Earth is incredibly diverse, from the tiniest microorganisms to the largest mammals. This diversity is remarkable to be sure, showing the adaptability of life and its ability to thrive in a wide range of environments. By studying life on our own planet, we gain valuable insights into the potential for life elsewhere, and the future is most certainly orange. Enter orange dwarf stars, or K-dwarfs, the unsung heroes of the stellar world. These stars, often overlooked in the grand tapestry of the cosmos, hold secrets that could redefine our understanding of where life might thrive beyond Earth. This slower burn results in a longer lifespan, stretching tens of billions, even trillions of years. In contrast, our Sun is expected to last around 10 billion years in total. The extended lifespan of K-dwarfs provides a much larger window of opportunity for life to emerge and evolve on surrounding planets. This extended lifetime gives planets orbiting K-dwarfs significantly more time to develop life, evolve complexity and even establish civilizations. Imagine a world where life has billions of years to adapt, diversify and potentially reach levels of technological advancement far beyond our own. But longevity isn't the only advantage K-dwarfs offer. Their stable and consistent energy output creates a more predictable environment for planets in their habitable zones. This stability reduces the likelihood of catastrophic events that could disrupt the development of life. They emit less radiation than our sun, particularly the harmful ultraviolet radiation that can damage DNA and hinder the emergence of life. Ultraviolet radiation can strip away planetary atmospheres and sterilize surfaces, making it challenging for life to gain a foothold. The reduced UV output of K-dwarfs creates a more nurturing environment for life to flourish. This gentler radiation environment, coupled with their remarkable stability, makes K-dwarfs ideal candidates for hosting life-bearing planets. The habitable zone around a K-dwarf, where conditions might be just right for liquid water to exist, is wider and more forgiving than that of hotter stars. This increases the chances of finding planets with the right conditions for life. What is more, the atmospheres of planets orbiting K-dwarfs are more likely to remain intact over long periods, providing a stable climate for life to develop. The combination of a stable star and a protected atmosphere creates a sanctuary where life can thrive uninterrupted for eons. As we continue to explore the cosmos with advanced telescopes and space observatories, 
the search for life around K dwarfs becomes increasingly important. Scientists are meticulously studying data from these stars, looking for signs of habitable planets and potential biosignatures that could indicate the presence of life. The discovery of a life-bearing planet around a K dwarf would be a monumental achievement, reshaping our understanding of the universe and our place within it. It would confirm that life can thrive in diverse environments and that the conditions for habitability are far more varied than we ever imagined. Now let's cut to the chase and allow ourselves the imagining that we have found an orange star and more importantly a world that circles its tantalizing orange glow. Imagine a planet bathed in the warm glow of an orange dwarf star. This star, smaller and cooler than our sun, casts a gentle amber light across the landscape, creating an otherworldly yet inviting atmosphere. The sky, painted in hues of orange and gold, offers a serene and calming vista, unlike anything seen on Earth. Let's call this planet Copious, a world that orbits its star at just the right distance where conditions are perfect for life to thrive. Copious is a beautiful world to which even science fiction could never do justice. And that's why these orange stars are so cool. Copious orbits its star in the habitable zone, the sweet spot where temperatures allow for liquid water on the surface. Much like Earth, Copious is mostly ocean, with several continents littering the vast unending seas. The presence of liquid water is a key indicator of the planet's potential to support life. But unlike Earth, Copious experiences a longer, more stable period of warmth and light thanks to its star's extended lifespan. The orange dwarf star, known for its longevity, provides a consistent and reliable source of energy, allowing life on Copious to evolve and adapt over extended periods. This stability fosters a rich and diverse biosphere, teeming with life forms that have adapted to the unique conditions of their world. On Earth, plants use chlorophyll to capture red and blue light for photosynthesis, but on a planet orbiting an orange dwarf, the light is skewed to thrive, plants would likely evolve specialized pigments. They might enhance their ability to absorb red and orange light, perhaps by modifying their chlorophyll or developing a wider array of accessory pigments. This could lead to interesting color variations. While we might expect lush green forests, it's just as plausible to imagine landscapes with blue-green vegetation reflecting the light they don't absorb. Or, in some cases, plants might become incredibly dark, almost black, to maximize their capture of the limited light. Ultimately, the color of these alien plants would be a complex interplay of factors. The precise spectrum of the star, the planet's atmosphere, and the evolutionary history of its flora. But I think we can be sure of one thing at least. The life on Copius would be wonderful and majestic beyond our wildest dreams but it's still fun to dream about it. Forests that glow in the night as if a city of life and color and skies that shine with plants that float in the dense atmosphere in a display of bio-luminescent light that would make a firefly blush, the clouds reflecting their color as if cotton candy adrift in the sky. Now let's turn our attention to the creatures that might call Copious home. Life here has evolved under the gentle orange glow of a K-dwarf star, shaping its fauna in fascinating ways. On Copious, survival means adapting to a whole new set of rules. Sensory adaptations are key. Imagine creatures on Copious with eyes finely tuned to the red and orange light, allowing them to perceive a world of hues we can only dream of. In the dim light of Copious, bioluminescence might be widespread, not just for attracting mates, but also for hunting and communication. Some predators on Copious might even use glowing lures to draw in unsuspecting prey. 
physical forms on Copius would also be sculpted by this world. If Copius is a super-Earth with higher gravity, animals might be shorter and more robust, built to withstand the increased pull. And with potentially different atmospheric conditions on Copius, we could see creatures with unique coverings or adaptations for navigating dense environments. Of course, everything on Copius is interconnected. The fauna's diet is dictated by the flora. If the plants on Copius have evolved specialised pigments to capture red light, the herbivores would need equally specialised digestive systems to process them. This could lead to a whole range of bizarre feeding strategies and symbiotic relationships on Copius. And then there's the dance of predator and prey on Copius. Imagine glow hunters with bioluminescent lures stalking amber grazers camouflaged in shades of orange and brown. Or whisperwings, creatures of Copius that navigate dense forests with enhanced hearing, snatching up insects in mid-flight. Huge balloon-like predators with eight tethers that dangle to the surface stalk the slow prey beneath them and inject them with a nerve agent, so they are paralysed as they slowly wind their tethers upwards so they may consume their prey, their bodies glowing in a warning to others of their kind that this is their territory, because on Copius, light is key for communication. The oceans of Copius too could be teeming with life. Bioluminescent creatures might cast the ocean depths with an array of beautiful colours, while massive filter-feeding organisms drift through the currents. Imagine seeing the oceans from space as they shimmer in a dance of iridescent light from a million billion creatures, large and small. It's a beautiful thought, isn't it? The search for life beyond Earth is a journey of wonderful potential. It demands of us that we confront our assumptions about the universe and our place within it. Our existence on Earth, orbiting a yellow dwarf star, may be a fortunate accident, a fleeting moment in the grand ocean of time and space. By exploring the possibilities of life around K dwarf stars, we expand our understanding of the conditions necessary for life's emergence and evolution. We open our minds to the possibility that life in all its forms might be far more diverse and extraordinary than we ever dared to imagine. Perhaps, just perhaps, planets like Copius hold the key to unlocking the secrets of life in the universe. If you have enjoyed this stellar story, please like and subscribe. See you next time.